Good evening, everybody on Zoom and in person. I'm David Jones, I'm going to be the Toastmaster of the day. We do have a small meeting tonight, as expected, due to Valentine's. We have uh, quite a few married people, including Elvis, who is in Dominican Republic, um, but he's going to say a quick hello. And I'm just going to let him say a quick hello, and then I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting. So, Elvis, do you want to hop in and say yes? Hey? Uh, thank you. <laughs> Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and honor honorable guests. Uh, as David mentioned, it's, it's good to have uh, the presence of the guests even today, which is a, a special day for many people. And, uh, and it's, it, we are honored uh, to have you also uh, come to the club and, and participate to uh, on this meeting uh, um, both in person and, and online. And so uh, welcome to Queen City Toastmasters and uh, hopefully uh, we can all enjoy uh, an awesome meeting today. So I will uh, let uh, David to do the introductions and uh, as usual, we uh, go ahead and introduce our guests. So David, take it away. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, well, as always, we wanna first introduce our guests. So I'm gonna start with, have Xavier. It's not a J, is it? Xavier. 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 Uh, introduce yourself to everybody and yes. say why you're here. All right. Uh, hi, my name is Xavier. I'm here today to listen to some great speeches and uh, learn more about uh, Toastmasters. Thank you much. And Gabriella, I believe, was here last week. Want to just reintroduce yourself to everybody? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Gabby. I'm here to watch some amazing speeches and become a better speaker myself. Thank you. Perfect. We have Shannon, uh, who's a official guest returning, and we have our brand new member, Dave, and I already put Dave to work as our timer. And nobody online, so I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting. Uh, don't really have a theme tonight. I just... Uh, this morning I woke up in Kansas City. I went to Kansas City for work on Sunday. And this is a sweater I took. Now, if you know where I'm going with this, Sunday night, I'm sitting at a bar, eating dinner, Kansas City Super Bowl's going on. Everybody's in red and there's one guy in green. I'm not a Phillies fan, it's just the sweatshirt I, I picked up. So nobody heckled me because I was like, hey, I'm from North Carolina. I have no, no skin in the game. I don't care who wins. So I'm glad Kansas City won though because then the next day I went to my appointment and everybody was really nice to me, so because they were all in a good mood. But I, I found it interesting when I was at the airports because I, I watch a lot on TikTok. All these people that are pulled off the planes because they can't control themselves, yelling and screaming. And I actually saw a couple people like that at the airport, and I just it baffles me because like they miss their plane and they start yelling at the person at the at the counter who has no ability to do anything for them, and they just they lose their minds. I'm not really sure why people do that. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting, and I want to first introduce our timer, our newest member, Dave. So, Dave, you want to come up and tell us about your role? And we'll give him some leeway because this is his first day as a member and his first role as a member. So, thanks for stepping up. All right. I'll work the lights for you. All right. So, as the timer, um, I will be uh, flipping the switches for green, yellow, and red. Uh, the first speech will be five to seven minutes. Um, it'll be green at five, yellow at six, and red at seven minutes. And then for the table topics, uh, those will be one to two minutes, uh, green at one, yellow at 1.30, and red at two. Oh, we have the evaluator too? Yeah, is that, okay, evaluator is uh, two to three minutes, uh, green at two, yellow at 2.30, and red at three minutes. Thank you much, Dave. Appreciate it. Now, we don't have a grammarian, uh, so I'll just throw in the word of the day. We try to use the word of the day whenever we can, and we'll just use the word uh, Super Bowl. 
I guess Super Bowl's easy enough. I think we can all maybe work it in. I don't know. Maybe you can say I watched the Super Bowl or I didn't watch the Super Bowl. And what else? I think that's it. Don't have any other roll keepers. Um, Allie's online. Perfect. Okay. And Andrea, are you ready? I'll go ahead and introduce Andrea Chocolate Butterfly, who's representing Queen City and the evaluation contest this Thursday, but she is also representing High Altitude Advanced Toastmasters Club as the international speaker. So she's going to give her speech mirror image. Andrea, take it away. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change. We all remember Michael Jackson releasing the song, Man in the Mirror. <laughs> I took that song as a call to action. It was a call to action to remind each of us, if we wanna make a change in this world, that first we needed to change ourselves. And look at that mirror image. However, the road to self-discovery for me, whew, it was a difficult one. It required me to release my insecurities, my past negative experiences, and release those thoughts and that negative talk intertwined with others' opinions from my own. I had to look at the woman, yes, I said woman, the woman in the mirror. I had nowhere else to go to make that change. Just want to start over. I hear family. Okay, I'm not going to do this. We're not going to do this today. <laughs> We're not going to do this today. This is why I don't write everything down. I, I started with the man in the mirror. And so let me tell you the story. I started as a youth, trying to find my place, trying to find my way. But what I found was I had put everybody else's thoughts on me and transferred them to them. So why wouldn't they believe in what I wanted to do? I was left brokenhearted with nowhere to go and no place to fulfill my dreams. I had to literally look at the woman in the mirror. Tony Gaskin says, I've never done this before, but I, I'm not gonna do this speech today because um, I apologize to everyone. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, we don't need a timer's report, so we'll we'll call you on for table topics. We're gonna go ahead and move to table topics and alley. I'm gonna stay up here just to what? Oh. Oh. All right. Yeah. All right. We're gonna we're gonna do an audible as we do in Toastmasters. Andrew's gonna start over, so Mr. Timer. The game of life. In the game of life, they tell you that you don't have to follow the rules. In the game of life, they tell you there's that game, that life is not a game. They literally tell you there's key players, there's rules to follow, and the only way you can win is to maneuver through all of this stuff. But life is not a game. 
I wrote the book, The Game of Life, about these three boys. So tell me, they may resonate with you. So Blue, Blue is this intelligent one. Blue had the ability to literally look at things and say, I can fix that. You know, things that are in your household, like a can opener, a can opener that, that works perfectly fine for you. But as a kid, you're like, I can't open this can with this electric can opener. How many people have had that? I know I'm not the only one. So Blue said, well, if I move the magnet out a little bit, guess what's going to happen? I can make this can opener work for me every time. Blue's mom came home, however, and she said, why is my can opener taken apart? And Blue said, mom, I didn't break it. I fixed it. Let me show you how it works better. Blue also had a love for video games. He wanted to play video games everywhere he went. Drove his mom crazy. She knew he was smart, but Blue just wanted to play games for the rest of his life. He kind of understood there was a game of life. Then the other boy, his name is Lorian. Lorian is our jokester. We always have a jokester in class, right? He's the most popular guy because he can make a laugh out of anything. He can make you laugh about you. And Lorian's favorite word was lame. So everything to Lorian was lame. You're lame. I'm lame. The teacher was lame. Even Lorian was lame. But Lorian, like most comedians, was very, very, very intelligent. But his dad, who had a dream to be an MBA, wanted to live vicariously through Lorian. So what did he push Lorian to do? Be a basketball player. Lorian was a star basketball player. He was looked up to for being the star basketball player. Nobody expected Lorian to be anything but a dumb jock. But Lorian wanted to do so much more. And then our last character, his name is Yusuf. Yusuf is this different kind of guy. He's not hard, he's not soft. Matter of fact, he was on the basketball team with Lorian and Blue. So he obviously had some kind of sports ability, but he loved art. He loved to create beautiful things. He loved color. He loved to find out and fascinate and see how they came together to create a beautiful picture. Another part about winning a game is you have to be able to see the whole picture. So these three friends, they lived and what I call the Caterpillar Village, because that's where all my books are at. It's a little quaint little town, something like, you know, think of your greatest small town with one street and one light, that's the Caterpillar Village. Except they had colorful houses and beautiful scenes, but they weren't supposed to go. They made it so comfortable that nobody wanted to leave, except for those who dream. Now, I just read today that 98% of the people do not follow their dreams. 98%? And you know the reason why? I'm going to give you the four reasons. First, how many people have a dream? See, not everybody rolls their hand, not even online. So that's the number one step. You have to have a dream. You have to have something in your mind, something that you like to do that you want to do for the rest of your life. Like Blue, I want to play games. That's what Blue said. I, I admire him. He said he want to play games. Then how many people that have a dream, how many of you believe in your dreams? Oh, we got even less hands now. So the problem is not that people don't dream, but nobody believes in their dream. And like me, you let other people tell you what you can and you cannot do. Because they don't believe in you. Why? Because as Tony Gasson skits, you teach people how to treat you by what you stop, what you reinforce, and what you allow. What have you allowed, stopped, or reinforced today? Your dreams? 
or the beliefs that other people are put upon you. So let's see. So I do have some people that still are with me. They dream and they believe. Now, I always like to say that pursued dreams come true. Only if you pursue them will they come true. So if you don't pursue them, it doesn't matter how much you dream. It doesn't matter how much you believe. They must be pursued. You have to take one step so that he can take two. It's an old saying they used to say at church. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing Bible-based, but they taught us that if you took one step, he'll take two. And I lived by that for so many years. So I found out that's not in the Bible anywhere. I, I looked and I searched and I'm telling you it's not there. But it does say that you have to have faith. So you have to believe but you have to do something. Faith without works is dead. That's what that came from. Faith without works is dead. You don't believe, you don't do anything. Your dreams can't come true. You have to pursue the things that you love. You have to pursue the things that you are good at. See, some things you are innately good at. I'm innately good at telling stories. I know that. I don't have to think about it. When I think about it, I get discombobulated and I, I, I get caught up in the words and I want to make it perfect because that's another thing I, I love doing, making everything perfect. They say that's what Virgos do, but I, I don't know. I don't put much stock in that, but I know that's partly me. So the steps again, you have to dream, you have to believe, you have to pursue because then you can achieve. You can achieve anything that you put your mind to. And because I did those four steps and I do them on everything, I, I did them in pageantry and writing books. And today I did it today. I had a dream that I would speak to each and every one of you to inspire you to also dream it, believe it, pursue it and achieve it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Good recovery. And that's what Toastmasters is. Even if you lose your place or stumble, just keep going because we're all here to support each other and it's a safe environment. All right, Mr. Timer, can we get a timer's report from you? 738. All right, thank you. Yeah, next time on the table. Yeah, usually come up and you'll read it on the on the next ones. And don't forget the word of the day is Super Bowl. I'm going to turn it over to our table topics master, Allie, who is on Zoom. And I'll just stay here and shout out to who's raising their hand in person. But I think we have time for everybody who wants to. So take it away, Allie. Okay. Um, thank you, fellow Toastmaster, honored guests. So um, table topics. So table topics is has been a lasting tradition of Toastmasters and it is intended to help our members develop their ability to organize their thoughts quickly and respond to impromptu questions. So today I have um, a few questions and we'll call on whoever is interested and we'll ask them their question and we will have a timer. You are allowed. I think it's one to two minutes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is my first time doing this. So thank you. One to two minutes. And the topics that I said, being that it's Valentine's Day, um, the day of love, um, I'm going to kick up off, kick us off with um, a quick inspiration to kind of get us in the mood. But it's fun memories and love, thinking of love. So to cultivate a friendship is a very special art that starts with an upturning in the corner of the heart. Add a touch of humor just to help the plant along. Sprinkle it with teardrops to make it grow more strong. Soon the buds will start appearing on each tiny stem and vine, blooming into a friendship of two hearts that intertwine. So with that in mind, as we kick off, um, who would like to go for our day of love? Anybody? We'll start with uh, Xavier, and then we'll turn it over to Shannon. So we have Xavier in person. Just hold on a second. He'll be here. All right. Allie's going to ask you a question. All right. All right. Perfect. 
Okay. So when you get a box of chocolate, there's a surprise inside. Do you pick it random? Do you bite it open and see what's inside? Do you break it open? Do you like the surprise? If the unknown, or would you rather have the chocolate of the experience that you know and why? Uh, that is an interesting question. Uh, I would say that I would uh, break it open and enjoy it. Uh, just like chocolate, I mean, joys in life, and you, know, you, you can only experience it once. Uh, just like a Super Bowl. Or when getting that first job, enjoying uh, enjoying your first car that you first that you finally bought, uh, those are moments that you really take in and really enjoy. Uh, just like a, just just like enjoying chocolate, you know that first bite, you know you really savor that the taste. You know the second bite, you know you reflect on that first bite. So I. Truly enjoy chocolate, especially a Hershey, a Hershey chocolate, I know, with almonds. You know, uh, each bite is just a new bite, a new experience, and I savor it uh, one bite at a time. You made it to the green. That's what Sonia says. Go for the green. <laughs> Okay, well, as we are saving our chocolate one bite at a time, and we're reminiscing about the Super Bowl commercials from yesterday, who is the next person for our questions? Carla is raising her hand in the virtual space. Excellent. Okay. Uh, just Car the time. Who's the timer? Um, we'll hold the time up to the thing for you. I'll, I'll take care of it. Okay, Carla. Valentine's Day is a time that we share love with each other and our families. It's the love holiday. We all have different love languages, acts of kindness, time, touch, gifts, and affirmation. What is your love language and do you share that with others? Thank you for that question. I think it's a trick question because I think that I can have any one or all of those love languages at any given time, depending upon who I'm with, what I'm doing, what I'm experiencing. And so for example, Super Bowl, which was last night, I drove to the place called Kill Devil Hills, and I am spending it with my oldest child, my stepdaughter, who had heart surgery a few days ago. And I am being of service to her and having a wonderful time. I just led her through a meditation, which I hope has helped her heart as she's healing. So I real, really feel privileged to be spending the time with her. And I feel a tremendous amount of love. And I feel really blessed to be able to do that. I also want to say that we definitely enjoyed the Super Bowl and we enjoyed a lot of the lovey-dovey sweet commercials and felt very joyful just to be together. So at any given time, whether it's a boyfriend, a spouse, my children, my dog, my coworkers, my family at Toastmasters, different love, language, love languages work for me at different times. Thank you very much for that question. I enjoyed answering it. Thank you, Carla. Uh, I believe we have Shannon next. Yeah, well, we've got Shannon here. Like I said, I think we have time for everybody who wants to go. <laughs> Even our general evaluator can go. Here's Shannon. Thank you. Okay, so um, what is your perfect idea of a Valentine's Day celebration and why? Madam Table Topics Master, that is a fantastic question. Me, 
my perfect idea of a Valentine's Day celebration is kind of what I'm doing now. I'm here at Toastmasters while my wife is home relaxing in her pajamas, Netflixing out. Now, I can do that because I've been happily married for 25 years. My wife's been happily married for about seven. A couple of those were consecutive, so I'm winning. I wouldn't recommend it to those in the younger relationships, though. If you're new to a relationship, you want to do something special with that person that lights up your life. You want to take them out to dinner. You want to make a memorable moment. Surprise them. Woo them. Wow them. Until you get to the point in marriage like I've reached. When the trick to a long-lasting and happy marriage is just ruining that person for anybody else so that nobody else would have them and nobody else will have you. So your love is what holds you together and keeps you sane. So, Madam Table Topics Master, I am living right now my perfect Valentine's Day celebration. Thank you. Oh, sorry, side question. I was asked what I did Sunday night. Well, I stayed at home. I made hamburgers, hot dogs, and I watched the NFC champions and the AFC champions play in this really big game to decide which of the two teams were the better. <laughs> he doesn't want to say the word of the day. All right. My girlfriend and I have been together for a year, so the fact that I'm here now might evidently be a red flag. I don't know. No, she understands. All right. Allie, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have more? Yep, of course. Oh, our guest here, uh, Gabby, would like to go. You're welcome. Hello. Oh, hello. So, Gabby, what is your favorite memory from Valentine's Day? Um, it's hard to really pick one. I think my favorite memory from Valentine's Day, my first, would be that my father never forgets me. So, in addition to buying my mom a Valentine's Day gift, he always made it a point to get me something as well. So, my second favorite memory from Valentine's Day is actually something that occurred today in which I got a booming knock on my door and I was like what's that who's this and my best friend is calling me I'm like hold on hold on there's someone at the door and it was her not in the physical but she bought me flowers and chocolate and so she had it sent to my door yes so those are my two favorite memories from Valentine's Day thank you very much Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. We do have one more guest in person if you're interested in trying one. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Didn't catch your name. You... Sayuk. One more time. Sayuk. Sayuk. Good to meet you. Sayuk. Allie's going to ask you a question and go for the green. <laughs> okay. Would you rather buy a Valentine's Day card or make your own and why? Thank you for the question. And to answer that, I don't think that I will buy a Valentine's Day card because I don't want to spend money on Valentine's Day. I will also not make my own card because that is not a good use of my time. However, I have a better use of both my time and money. I will order food, lots of food. I love food. So I think that my money is well spent on ordering food. And I will use the time to eat the food nicely, relishing the taste while watching sports like Super Bowl. Although 
it has been two days so i think that i will buy a lot of food during super bowl and eat that until valentine's day and by any chance if the food is over before i have my time that is required to make the valentine's card left i will spend the remaining time doing my second favorite activity that is sleeping i love food i love sleeping and i want to spend time and money on my two activities that i like doing than making card or buying card thank you and back to the toastmaster spoken like a true bachelor Do we have any more? I don't know if uh, Sonia wants to try one or there she goes. <laughs> okay. Okay, Sonia. Um, when you think of love, how would you describe it? Thank you for that question. And when I think of love, how would I describe it? Love is patient and love is kind. And I stole that from the Bible because I don't think people truly understand what true love is. True love is standing in the gap for someone, even if you don't like them. A lot of people say, how can I love someone I don't like? You treat people as Andrea, the chocolate butterfly, say you treat people how you want to be treated. When you pour into someone enough, they may just pour back into you. Love is not selfish. Sometimes it's transactional. I give you this and you give me that. But true love, true stepping in your purpose is just giving. Now, should you just give just to give and someone's treating you differently? No, you have discernment. Not everyone is deserving of all your love, but it doesn't mean they can't just have a little piece of it. Because you never know when you plant a seed and you nurtured that seed, it might not grow today. It might not grow five years from now, but it could grow in 10 years. And someone will come back to you and say, thank you for loving me. I used to go to a church and one of our core values was love people when they least expect it, when they least deserve it. And that stood with me. So if I want to challenge anyone here today who's here on Valentine's Day, you feel like nobody loves you and you're going to go to a Toastmasters meeting or you came because you wanted to give love, keep reaching out, keep connecting, because that's true love. We all deserve true love. And you can give it to someone who thinks they can never have it by just saying hello and giving a smile. So thank you for allowing me to ask that question. Thanks. Thank you so much. Okay. I think that's all we have time for. Okay. We have a. Thank you, uh, you Alex. Oh, yep. sure. Yep. We'll have them come up here, Dave. I think so. All right, for table topics, uh, just a reminder one to two minutes, green at one, yellow at 130, red at two minutes. Uh, Xavier. Uh, talking to us about bites of chocolate, one minute and three seconds. Carla, talking to us about love languages, one minute and 26 seconds. Shannon, talking to us about memorable Valentine's Day knowledge, one minute and 30 seconds. Gabby, talking to us about favorite Valentine's memories, 45 seconds. Um, Syed, was it Syed? Uh, about buying Valentine's Day cards or making your own, one minute, 28 seconds. And Sonia, describing love, one minute and 46 seconds. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And we'll have you come up one more time after the evaluators go. All right. Thank you, Allie. And for now, I'm going to turn it over to our general evaluator, Sonia Pons. Hi, family. It's my absolute pleasure to be your junior evaluator today as we talk about the Super Bowl of love here in Toastmasters with Queen City. First up, I'd like to call our first evaluator, Shannon, to give us a chocolate butterfly, a little feedback. Shannon, welcome to the stage. Thank you, sir. That's her name, Andrea Chocolate Butterfly Woods. Nice. <laughs> Uh, 
I like that. Is that your official name, Chocolate Butterfly? Just that is awesome. I went by the stage name of Spiced Vanilla, but that was that was in college. Now to officially start your evaluation, Andre, you went with the game of life speech, and what I noticed between the beginning of your first speech that you attempted and the beginning of the second speech was in the second speech, you were automatically engaging and relaxed and interactive with the audience. That was fantastic. Always keep that up. You made some great points about how life is a challenge and how you have to work yourself through the game. One thing I would suggest, you kind of shifted topics there about halfway through, kind of went from life being a game to not living up to dreams. And that, got, that can get kind of confusing. And I'm easily confused because I'm old and slow. So you can accept me as the lowest common denominator of your audience. You always want to make that message clear. Now, you use great examples. You told the story of the three individuals and their dreams. But I really would have loved if you had summed up the stories. Did they achieve those dreams? You kind of left us hanging. You also gave us the reasons why people don't follow their dreams. Very, very good. Terrific engagement with the audience. You asked questions. You waited for answers. Everyone was enthralled. My last suggestion is, especially with a speech as good as this, as good as this topic was for you, leave your audience with a call to action. Something as powerful as following your dream, challenge the audience members, especially those who weren't raising their hands when you're asking the questions, to go out and find, the, find their dream, follow it, pursue it, and achieve it. That would be the powerful takeaway from a terrific speech. Great job. I can't wait to hear you speak again. Thank you. Fantastic job, Shannon. Next up, we're going to ask our grammarian to give us a grammarian report. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. I didn't actually do a grammarian report. I just uh, did the word of the day. Especially when I'm Toastmaster, I know I had many filler words, but for word of the day, Super Bowl, I believe I had Javier, uh, Xavier, sorry, I'm from Miami, so I'm used to the J. <laughs> I had Carla, uh, Sayak, Sonia, Shannon danced around it, so he, he didn't actually want to say the word, he just implied it, <laughs> and if I missed anybody else, I apologize, back to you. Oh, and also Allie did say it a couple of times as a Toastmaster or Table Topics Master. Back to you, Sonia. Fantastic. And can I get a time which report for the evaluator? For, for Shannon, we had two minutes and 51 seconds. Thank you. Fantastic job. Now, family, I will give my evaluation of the meeting. I love that this is a hybrid meeting. Why? Because Toastmasters International is asking us to slowly move in person or go hybrid. And this club was doing it before anybody else was. So fantastic job on being a forward thinking club. But also thank you for making this a safe space. I'm going to tell you why I think it's a safe space. Number one, you came in, you say, hey, 
we don't have a lot of people saying, I need you to take on a role. Would you be willing to take on a role? I wasn't just given a role. I was asked which one I would be more comfortable with. I love that safe space where people can grow. Also, there's mentorship at this club. First time timer, I saw you walking him through the process on the back end of Zoomer. I love that. I gave feedback one time. I said, hey, you got to start engaging with people on the Zoom. You guys engage with people on the Zoom. I also love that confidence in this club we built confidence and I love how when Andrea the chocolate butterfly got up there she fumbled a little bit but you encouraged her and you loved her to come back and she finished strong in these rooms where where leaders are made and where communicators are made and communicators and leaders they may fumble but they always pick up and hit a touchdown so fantastic job for hitting the home run well, I shouldn't say that. We're the Super Bowl, the touchdown for this evening. Andrea, thank you for being vulnerable, for saying, you know what? I don't want to read a speech. I don't want to read my notes. I'm going to come back and do something from my heart. I love that you did that. Table topics. Allie. Sometimes people just give up a question like, hey, what's your favorite color? Tell me about your favorite team. And I was all prepared to talk about how I did not care that Jalen Hurt lost because he was a former quarterback for Alabama and I'm from Auburn War Eagle. I'm glad the Eagles lost, but you didn't ask those type of questions. You asked questions that challenged us. It challenged us to be introspective about our experiences with love, but also our senses. You had people talking about chocolate and how to savor chocolate. Fantastic. You truly embody what a great topics master is. That's not surface. You made us go deeper. I love that. The evaluator, Shannon. Shannon, thank you so much for modeling what evaluation should be. An evaluation is a speech. It is a speech. You started with humor. You didn't really know Andrea. So what did you do? You used humor and then you checked in with her. Is that your stage name? How do you go by that? You connected with her. Why? Because your evaluation is your assumption of not your impression of her speech. So you made a connection with her immediately, but you also made us laugh in the process. And you didn't whitewash it, whitewash it either. You gave her feed forward feedback, but you also celebrated her. I love that. And right back to mentorship. David said, you know what? You can give a timer report in the chair, but next time come up. And you did it in such a loving and supportive way. And you also involved everyone in the room. Toastmasters is an experience. And we want everyone who comes in the room to have an experience. And in this club, you demonstrate that you greet the guests. I saw David running and greeting guests, going to the table greeting guests. You guys do that by moving around each and every, every time I come with the microphone. You do it so well. You make people feel loved and appreciated. So thank you for modeling what a true Toastmaster experience should look like. Feedback, or I say feed forward. <laughs> That's going to be challenging. I would challenge all of you who are friends of Queen City, and I'm calling out our South Park team members, as well as members of Queen City, get on free toast hosts and sign up for roles. That is how you're going to prove that this club is continually DCP level club because you're involved. And with that, I will turn it back over to our Toastmaster of the day or the evening, I should say. Yes. Thank you, Toastmaster Sonia. Appreciate it. And Sonia just also mentioned something for the guests and the new members. South Park is our sister club. They meet on Mondays at 12 o'clock in person at South Park uh, Library, but they're also on Zoom. And as a member of Queen City, you, you have access to them. You can go there. So therefore, you can be giving speeches twice a week. You know, Carla and Sonia are both at South Park. They get to come to our club, do roles, give speeches, and it works both ways. So you get double for your money if you join here or if you join there vice versa. Uh, I do have an award for Dave. Dave is our newest member. And this is welcome to Toastmaster. Thank you much, sir. There you go. Just says welcome to Toastmasters. His first day as a new member and he did a role. So perfect. That's the way to get jump right in. And I believe Allie said that was her first time as well as uh, Table Topics Master. So congratulations for that. And before we close out, I'm going to have Elvis close us out at the end, but I want to go back around to our guests and just get a little feedback from them. Think what they thought. Xavier, right? X. I got to say it right. Xavier. That's right. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, this evening was a great evening. Uh, great speeches. Uh, thank you, Chocolate Butterfly, for your inspirational speech. Uh, I will, you know, find a dream and I will pursue it moving forward. Uh, today was a great evening.
Did you feel comfortable giving the table topics, getting up on stage? And were you okay? Perfect. You did it. Yeah. That's why you're here. Perfect. And Gabby? Or... Feedback, you say? Okay. So there's a couple things that I took from this today. Um, one from Miss Chocolate Butterfly speech, um, the idea of perseverance and just connecting with the audience. So even though you felt that, or you may have felt that we didn't really um, pick anything up from the first speech, I loved your movement. I loved your tone. I loved the way you talked to us. And I embodied that or tried to in my answer because you even went up to begin with. So I think there's just value in trying. And so you proved that to me tonight. So there was that. Um, if I was to give one piece of feedback, I would love for us to just work on projection because there's a lot of noise in the room. And also it's just something that I'm trying to get better at. So if we could just be a little bit militant, like use your voice, be loud. Were you talking to me specifically? Or? Oh, okay. No, I, I, I try to project because sometimes we use this mic and we just kind of talk. We think that the speaker, the speakers aren't hooked up though. Yeah, I agree. Got to project. Right. Yeah, there's always noise wherever we're at. I agree. Thank you much. Also want to point out that uh, Andrea had on her Michael Jackson hat, her glove, her glove and her pants. She was ready to go for the speech. So she gets credit for that. Um, Sayak, is that, did I say it right? Frank, any thoughts or feedback for tonight? Yeah, I thought the meeting was great. I have been part of Toastmasters for the last four years. I just moved to Charlotte from Charlottesville, Virginia. Where there I was, I was part of Blue Ridge Toastmasters, and so I just moved to Charlotte, and it was uh, it's always nice attending Toastmasters meeting, and always nice to see how different work, uh, different clubs function, and always like nice, just taking back the experience and improving. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. With that, I'm going to ask for Elvis to go ahead and close us out. We're going to be getting out a little bit early tonight. So Elvis. You're on I hope mute. the video is better now. Yes. I, yes, we can. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate everybody's participation tonight. Uh, a great turnover. I have heard and we have heard uh, a lot about uh, being given lemons and uh, doing lemonades. I think we did <laughs> a great uh, lemonade today, uh, given that we started a little slow, uh, thinking that many people have uh, obviously uh, different choices tonight, and it was going to be a, uh, a meeting with, uh, with low participation. But it was totally different. I appreciate everybody's participation. Great uh, participation from, from all the guests. Great uh, turnover uh, on the uh, speech from Andrea and you know coming back and, and great evaluation. So great meeting uh, overall. So I, I appreciate you, all the members, all the guests who participated and we would like to invite you to come over to our meeting again next Tuesday. So with that uh, great meeting, uh, thank you, David, as usual. And uh, thank you all for uh, coming over and uh, you all have a good night. Happy Valentine's Day <laughs> to everyone. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> right. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Good night, everyone. Although Andrea is going to sing some a song for us, but oh, but this is fishy um, after the meeting. It's after the meeting. <laughs> um. At last, my love has come along. My lonely days are over. And life is like a soul.
the skies above are blue. My heart is filled like clover when I look at you. I found a dream that I could speak to, a dream that I can call my own. I found a love just us two, a love that I never know. Ooh, and your smiles, your smiles. And then the spell was cast. And here we are in heaven. Cause you are mine. You are mine, you are mine, you are mine, you are mine. Happy Valentine. <laughs> you wanted smooth criminal. All right, good night, everyone. Hope to see you all next Tuesday. Good night. Thank you for that, Andrea.